So in this video, we're going to be um, showing an astral guide to processing the M33 or Triangulum Galaxy. And the workflow that we'll be using today is that the light frames and calibration frames are stacked in Astro Pixel Processor. And then the stacked image is further processed within Star Tools and finally tweaked within Photoshop. And for this video within Photoshop, we're going to be using some action plans uh, from a company called Pro Digital Software and their astronomy tools. I've got no affiliation with any of these applications. I just use them for the, the hobby myself. However, links to the applications and software used can be found within the description below. So before we start, um, some quick information about the, the galaxy of the deep sky object. Um, so the Triangulum Galaxy is a spiral galaxy at a distance of 2.73 million light years. Um, and it's actually the third largest member of our local group of galaxies, which is behind the Milky Way and the Andromeda Galaxy. And for reference, the Andromeda Galaxy, which was one of the other videos I've produced, um, that is slightly closer at a mere 2.5 million light years. So... Um, the stacking um, of the light calibration frames um, used Astro Pixel Processor. However, they were taken all at an ISO 400 on a modify, unmodified Canon 800D DSLR camera. And that was attached to my Skywatcher Evo Star 80 ED telescope. Um, and they were connected via a, a 0.8 reducer. So the frames I've used um, within APP are 126 uh, times 60 second exposure. Um, so that gives us just over two hours of data. Um, and this was taken from a class eight bottle uh, back garden in the northeast of England. And then as you can see, as indicated on the left hand side, um, I used a set of calibration files. Um, 124 flats, 20 darks, 124 dark flats, and 100 bias frames. Um, and this took about 45 to 50 minutes to process, and APP produced uh, the very dark image in the centre here, which is difficult to see. Um, but this is unstretched. However, just to give us an idea of what we are working with or will be working with, um, as if I stretch it in APP and you can see there um, the stacked frames, a few of them are, are offset um, but APP has done a, a good job to um, line everything up and if we zoom in we can see the faint or the basis of uh, the galaxy itself. Um, however, we're going to take uh, the stacked uh, FITS file, which APP has uh, created for us. This is a unstretched and we'll import this into Star Tools. And this is where we'll actually begin um, the further processing of the image. Okay, so we've opened Star Tools and we are going to open the image that we've just viewed in APP, um, which is a FITS type uh, data file. And Star Tools is currently opening that file quite slowly. Um, and it's going to ask us what type of data set is within the file that we're opening. Um, so per my previous video, um, this is uh, unstretched. It's not being balanced and it's from a DSLR camera. So we're going to select the middle option here. And as you can see, again, very, very dark, um, the initial unstretched file. So workflow that we're going to follow, we're going to start with um, auto develop. And this is basically where Star Tools um, performs a stretch. Um, on the actual file itself. So we can see what we are working with. So there you can see similar to um, APP, uh, multiple stacked areas in the corners, 
a bit of kind of maybe light pollution or light creep in the bottom right hand corner. Um, but hopefully we'll work through star tools to, um, to remove all of this. So we don't actually change anything or any settings here. We'll just simply say keep, um, which is telling star tools that we're happy with the um, initial auto stretch that we want to work with. Um, it's black and white. Well, not black and white, I suppose mono, uh, grayscale. And later on, when we get to the color module, that's where we bring the color out itself. So we're going to use the uh, the bin module first. Um, this is basically where we um, trade or reduce the resolution um, of the image. However, in doing that, we also reduce the noise um, of the within the image as well. Um, so as you can see here, even at a, a fifty percent scale. We still got a over 3000 by 2000 uh, pixel or resolution image, which is still very, very high. So I'm going to reduce this down to about 45%, um, which gives us a nice trade off, as I said, between noise and resolution size. So we just change the scale at the bottom. And then once we're happy, we just press the keep button at the top. The star tools is obviously processing and change. Okay, so we've turned um, with a lower resolution, but obviously, as I said, a lower noise within the image. And the next thing we want to do is crop the image so we can get rid of um, the, the corners of the stacking artifacts that we don't really want to see. Um, so cropping, we just simply drag over the area um, the green around the border is where it will crop or where it will remove. And also I just want to show you that you can be a little bit more specific um, or accurate um, by using, just clicking at the bottom for the X and Y axes. Um, so I'm going to just adjust these just to show you how that's done uh, very slightly. So we'll go and what I'm trying to also do here as well, as we can see in the center of the screen, we've got a green crosshair. Um, and I'm just trying to keep that just for, for framing purposes um, in the center of the galaxy. So we know that we are sendable with our um, object within the image. So once we're happy with that, hit keep and star tools will actually do the, um, the cropping. And the next side we want to do is we've got kind of a, a gradient going on in the right hand side, um, especially in the right bottom right corner, as opposed to the left hand side where it's it's um, the background is is more dark compared to the right. So within Star Tools, we're going to use the wipe module, and first thing we're going to do is make a mask because we don't want to affect the area of the the galaxy itself. Uh, so clear the current mask, which by default is the entire image. So we've cleared that. Um, and then at the bottom, the brush mode, I'm going to change the lasso. So this allows us just to manually select the areas we want to mask out. And just going to draw um, around the galaxy itself. So you can see where I'm, I'm drawn around as a green line appearing. Um, now, if you want to with this galaxy, you can obviously go in and out specifically of the arms. Um, but just for this demo or video, I'm just going to highlight as a block. OK, so there we go. We need to invert the mask um, because moving forward, um, the green area is where star tools will process. And the, um, the mono area, the galaxy itself, is where star tools will not process or will not apply any uh, gradient changes against it. OK, so we've got our mask created there. Um, I'm just going to increase the precision of the actual gradient itself or other the wipe. Um, and within star tools, you can click on the question mark beside everything and it'll show you a little um, 
I guess, a, a, a small block of text indicating what the module will actually do. And although you can't see it in my browser on my other monitor, um, it loads up a help file specifically for this module. Okay, um, I'm going to increase the dark filter as well to around six. And this is just basically how strong um, the white is on the dark anomalies, which is such as dead pixels or stacking um, or dust, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I want it to be quite um, aggressive in line with the 75% that I've just left there. And then once we've hit um, put the settings in, we'll just click on do. And that actually runs the gradient um, wipe for us. So this will take a couple of, uh, or several seconds, I suppose, to perform. And once this is complete, we'll, we'll have a look at the before and after um, of this process, what it's done to the image. So it's obviously taken a few cycles for it to complete this. And it's just finishing off, as you can see on the, the progress circle. Okay, so there we go. So we click on uh, before, that is what we started with. And then the after is showing um, the gradient adjustment that's been made. Um, so there is still a bit of um, gradient change around the areas, um, but that looks good enough for us to continue moving forward with as, as is. So cl click on keep. Um, and that applies the wipe to our image and in a second it should return us back to the original page or the workflow page of star tools Hit keep again there we go okay um, so the next thing we want to do is um, we want to apply a develop again so this basically takes all of the um, the, the wipe gradient changes that's been made and reapplies us to the base stretch that we did through auto dev. Um, some people do use auto develop, um, but I can't seem to get good results um, with that the second time round. So this is why I do it within manual, manual develop myself. Um, <clears throat> so basically all I'm going to be adjusting in here is the digital development slider. Um, which if we do a question mark, um, basically you can see here, it, it further stretches our data um, for the process and, and just gives us a, a feel for that we should be dragging the slider along um, until the faintest parts of the image are just visible enough, but in a good balance with the dark areas. So I think that's a good balance between what we can see, the galaxy, um, the arms, and a little bit of the, the core in the middle there. And that's a good balance with um, the rest of the, the sky or, or the deep sky. Um, and also looking good on the, on the stars there as well. So I think we'll, we'll, we'll keep with that. So all I've done is adjusted the digital development. Um, it's probably a little bit trial and error. Uh, the more you use star tools, the better you'll get a feel for what level you're looking for. 
Um, so again, we just press keep to return back to our main workflow. And we're gonna continue um, down by using the HDR module, which is the high dynamic range. Okay, so with that module, and this allows us to optimize um, kind of the local dynamic range, which, which brings out more um, detail that is within the data. Okay, so we're gonna hit re real core at the top here. Um, this predetermines some of the settings at the bottom. I'm just going to increase the, the detail size range uh, to 2000. So this just uh, kind of was it in, increases partially the strength, but the amount of detail that's brought out. And just going to increase the strength of this um, to about two. So we've got. OK, and then. We can see that this is working on the bottom right hand corner. There's a circle goes around. So there's no like do or apply within this module. Um, this is just as and when you adjust the parameters at the bottom, it automatically um, adjusts. Unfortunately, there's no progress bar on this um, module either, so we can't see how far through we are. We just have to wait, unfortunately. Okay, so it's complete, and we'll use the, the before and the after. And if we zoom into the galaxy itself, so there was the before and there's the after and what this allowed what the changes are that we're seeing here is that it's brought out more of the the dust lanes or the shadows um within the galaxy itself okay so let's uh keep that and we'll return back to the workflow again um where we'll move actually on to bringing color into the image Okay, so let's uh, load the um, the color module. So click on the color icon on the left hand side. Uh, we'll get a warning here or a bit of information that we've currently only got uh, part of the entire image masked out. Um, so we want to fill the mask because we want to apply the color um, right across uh, the image rather than just um, the masked part of it. So um, I'm going to increase the, the dark saturation slightly um, to about 6.7, so a little bit more than slightly. Uh, and you can see some color coming out there already. But what I'll tend to do or like to do is um, if we flip to the uh, max RGB view, um, this kind of shows us how much blue, how much green, how much red is across the image. Um, and we want to try and keep it fairly balanced. Um, and from my experience, having not too much green in there either um, is, is a good move. Um, I don't think, I think the, the theory is, is that there's not actually too much green in space um, or from the deep uh, sky objects. So we should reflect that in the amount of green that's in our image. So, um, Using the sliders on the right hand side here, red, green, blue bias, um, I've got these set up to reduce the color bias. So the larger the um, uh, the slider or further to the right, um, the more of that color is removed. So if we move up a little bit to, to drop out a little bit blue, um, we're just adding some green. So we just need to tweak these to try and balance it. Um, probably took too much red out there. Uh, a little bit blue out, a little bit green out. Let's have a look at this next one. So hopefully we're trying to add in a little bit more red here 
um, as we remove the green and the blue. So if we click on normal, we'll get a, a little, um, not a little, sorry, the image shows the color that's been added in. We can zoom in a little bit more on that. And then like all the modules, we can click on the before, which is when we first loaded this and the after, which is where we are with the color now. Um, so that's looking quite good actually. Um, bit of variation um, around the galaxy itself. Uh, the stars are looking good as well, not too white, uh, a little bit orange, a little bit yellow, um, but in general, I'm quite pleased with that. So from here, it's just a case of playing with the colors um, that suits your eye. As I said, I find moving to this um, RGB mode um, a little bit easier um, just to see what's come through. So I'm just gonna try, um, capping the amount of green. So this slider here um, drastically removes the green bias or the green color out of the image. And if we go back to normal, uh, zoom in a little bit. We've got some nice blue kind of wisp on the arms of the galaxy and the center of the core of the galaxy is looking good as well. Um, and we've got these nice shadows within the arms as well coming through. Um, so I think we're, we're going to keep that. I'm quite happy with that. Um, so let's just press the keep button. And then the final thing we're going to do, um, or the penultimate, sorry, is we're going to uh, take off the tracking and that allows a final grain removal or noise reduction to be applied. Um, so as soon as you click on track, um, so track is just basically star tools um, tracking the different changes that have been made. But once it's been removed or stopped tracking, there's no going back. But to apply the grain reduction or the noise reduction, we have to um, end the tracking. So I'm going to press grain removal. I'm just going to increase... Um, this slightly to about 9.2. Again, this is just kind of like a little bit of experience and trying things out over time. Uh, 9.2 and then press next. And the noise reduction will be applied. Again, with all these modules, you can generally click on the question mark next to the parameter that you're changing. Um, and it'll give you a small window or a small box explaining. Um, and also, again, off the side of the screen in my other browser, um, it shows a, a help desk page for the particular module, which goes into a little bit more depth. So hopefully two more iterations on this. And then we can zoom out. Um, and the mask is still being applied on this, um, but in a second it'll stop flashing green. And then we'll see a, a before and an after on this. So from a distance, it um, doesn't look too much difference. But if we zoom in, uh, so that's before. You can, see, you can see kind of a lot of graining on the black areas or the shadows. And then on the after, um, less graining and everything's been smoothed um, smoothed into each other or blended into each other. So from a distance, uh, it doesn't look too, too much change, um, but once you zoom in, um, you can certainly see the, the different effects that, or the effect that this module's had. Um, so I'm happy with that, uh, not gonna toot with that too much. So we're just gonna click on keep. And then the final module I want to show you, um, so this is definitely you know, personal choice, is how we can shrink or reduce the amount of stars that are in the field. So to do this, click on the shrink and it explains to us that we need uh, a star mask and the current mask is not very suitable. So click OK to that. And to create a star mask, we choose mask at the top, clear the current mask, auto create a mask and we want to mask the stars um, click on that and then click on uh, do 
and that will create the mask for us. And there you can see the green uh, mask is around the stars. And again, if you remember, any um, processing is applied to the green mask. So we're going to keep that mask. We're happy with it. Uh, zoom out. So we're back to the actual um, uh, shrink stars module itself. Um, it's been applied just to the mask or the star mask. I'm going to click on the before and then click on the after. So the before is slightly brighter. So it's not actually um, removing the stars. It's just shrinking the, the brightness of the stars. Um, and then here's an after. And I think if I zoom in a little bit, I'll just go to the side where I've got the stars. So that is a before and that's the after. So if, um, especially around the, the center of the, the galaxy itself, uh, you can see the difference. If you wanted to go further a little bit more, you can expand the iteration to two pixels. Um, and that clears them out even more. Uh, zoom back out just so we can see what that looks like. So this is after, much dimmer, and that's the before. Okay, so... Um, I'm just trying to see what personal preference on this is. I'm going to go back to one. So that's a before and that's after. So I'm just going to, I'm going to keep that. Uh, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, uh, I'm just going to clear the mask so that we can see the final image. So mask and then clear. Click on keep. Uh, and there's our final image within star tools. So to save this out, so Star Tools, um, if you've got the trial version, you cannot save your image. Um, but if you've got the put full paid license version, um, it allows you to um, obviously save or export it. So I'm just going to say here, uh, APP was what we did in Astro Pixel Processor, Unstretched. And then in Star Tools, we have processed it. So this is just, a, I guess, a file system I've got of showing um, which tools have used um, or have been used against or applied against an image and I'm going to save that. Okay so hopefully that's a good run through um, of what we can do um, within Star Tools um, all the way through a workflow. I didn't use every single module um, because you know not every image requires every module to be used um, but I'm quite happy with the final output there. Okay, so we've loaded um, the image from Star Tools straight into uh, Adobe Photoshop. Um, and we're going to do a, a little bit of final processing in here. So on the right hand side to start with, you can see there's a bit of, I don't know whether it's pollution light um, that's followed through, um, but we're going to try and remove that uh, to begin with. So first off, we're going to duplicate the base layer. Um, and I'm just going to call this light pollution. Um, I don't know if it specifically is that, but anyway, um, good enough name for me. Then to address this issue, what we need to do is create another layer and this layer um, is just going to give us, um, a, I'm going to calculate a base color that this hue um, or tint is from. And then we are going to remo remove that from our um, light pollution layer that we just made. So first off, make sure that layer one is selected. And then you want to use the eye dropper tool um a three by three or five by five average is fine um that just basically averages out the area where we select so i'm going to select down in the bottom right hand corner here um a nice part of this pollution color so just click it and you'll see on the left hand side here uh, the color has been set to whatever we've just selected so we want to fill the entire image um, or layer with that selected color. 
So on a MacBook, um, I just press Option and then the Delete key, and that fills the entire layer. And then what we'll need to do here is select the previous layer, which is our light pollution layer, and then go to Image, Apply Image, and then what we'll need to make sure is selected here is Subtract, because we are going to take away the layer one from this light pollution layer. Um, offset of 30 is fine, opacity 100% is fine because we want to apply the full strength of it. Click on OK. And then what we need to do is just delete this first layer. And there you can see, um, clicking between, we've took that kind of like orange hue away off it. And uh, we've got more of a darker bluish. Um, and it's also improved the galaxy and its arms itself. So moving forward, um, I'm just going to create a new layer there. But what I want to introduce you to is something called astronomy tools or actions specifically within the astronomy tools. Um, I'll post a link to the website below in the description. Um, but basically, these are a set of um, uh, actions that can be run within Photoshop um, and the specifically, um, I'll just show you the list actually, the specifically geared towards um, things that I might want to do with astrophotography, such as making stars smaller, removing gradients, um, reducing halos, etc. of stars, increasing the star color, etc. etc. So please take a look. Um, I'm not affiliated with them at all. Um, but I find that these astronomy actions um, do help within Photoshop. So the first thing we're going to do is we've just created that layer um, and we're just going to do a, um, a soft colour removal, which again might help this bottom right hand corner. So I'm just going to call this soft colour removal as a reminder to what we've done or where we came from. Um, I find the action and then I just press the play button at the bottom. Goes away, it does an action. And then if we go to layers, we're going to easily turn the layer on and off. Um, it's removed the blue hue, which is good. Uh, it was a little bit too bright. Um, so we'll stay with that and continue. So again, the next layer. Um, this is the next action we want to do. Um, and I just want to take a little bit out of the stars. Um, so I'm going to call this make star smaller. Again, this is just reminding, call us what we want. is just reminding us of the actions that we've done. Um, and in this list, if I can find it, um, I hear everybody shouting at it as um, reduce, reduce, reduce. Make star smaller, sorry, not reduce. Run that action. And it'll take a little bit out of the stars again. Stars are, I guess, preferential or personal opinion. Um, but I've just taken just a little off of that. So make stars smaller. Um, next option uh, we are going to run. Um, so again, if I just make a new layer on this, is a local contrast enhancement. So what I want to do here, sorry, just finish that off, um, is the shadows in the center, um, want to make them a little bit more prominent. Um, so we're going to run the local contrast enhancement. I wish these were uh, alphabetical. There we are at the bottom. Uh, run that on this layer. And if we turn the layer on and off, just zoom in a little bit, we can see how the shadows are a little bit more clear. So we lost a little bit smoothness on the arms, um, but I think the, the change in contrast helps define the arms a little bit better. Okay, so next uh, action. Again, we'll just create a new layer. Um, we're going to run the a deep noise reduction action. Um, deep noise space reduction. Okay, click and run the action. 
and that reduces uh, the noise from the, the darkest areas of the image. Um, so hopefully it hasn't touched anything in the um, the galaxy region itself, but the areas around it will have reduced uh, the noise on that, which is good. And the final layer, um, I'm just going to do uh, within Photoshop itself. So I'm just going to say adjust hue saturation. Um, images adjust hue saturation. This is just to, to boost uh, the colors a little bit. Okay, so subtle change there. Let's see if the saturation more is a little bit too much. Yeah, I think we're putting a little bit too yellow, too much yellow into the core. Uh, so we'll leave it at that. Um, so there we go. Um, I know there's, there's various ways of um, processing within Photoshop. Um, I just wanted to give you a, a look at these astronomy tool actions that I like to use. Um, the right hand side, the bottom corner here, this could be a little bit of the processing and star tools could have been improved. Um, or maybe we need to take another look at possibly the flats that we've used within the processing. Um, but overall, I'm quite happy with that. We can see the arms, we can see the galaxy, the core of the galaxy. Um, the stars, etc., all look good. Um, so I think we'll call that done. Um, so if you like this video, please uh, leave some comments below. Um, please subscribe. That helps me know that everybody's interested in what I'm doing. Uh, makes me create more of these videos. Um, and hopefully I'll see you again shortly on the next video for Astro Guides. Thank you.